Welcome to NPTEL online course on machine learning and deep learning fundamentals and applications. In this week, I explain the principles of logistic regression and the decision trees. Today, I am going to explain the concept of one important machine learning model that is the hidden Markov model. Hidden Markov model is a graphical model which can be used to predict a sequence of unknown variables from a set of observed variables. So, for this I will be considering Markov chain property. So, that I will be explaining today. So, let us discuss about the model. The model is the hidden Markov model. So, first I will explain what is the Markov model. So, for Markov model we are considering a set of states set of states so states are s1 s2 so we are considering n number of states and after this another consideration the process moves from one state to another generating a sequence of states. So, what actually we are considering? So, the process moves from one state to another and because of this movement I am getting a sequence of states. So, this sequence of states I can write like this. So, S1, S2. So, these are the states SK. So, this is another consideration and we have to consider the Markov chain property the Markov chain property so what is the meaning of this this mathematically I can show like this the probability of SK that is the probability of the state SK it depends on the previous states S1 S2 like this up to S k minus 1. That means the probability of each subsequent state depends only on what was the previous state. So, you can see the probability of S k that is state is S k it depends on only S 1 S 2 up to S k minus 1. These are the previous states. So, mathematically I can write like this the probability of S k that means the state S k depends on the previous state the previous state is S k minus 1. So, that is the Markov chain property and to define the Markov model we are considering following probabilities. So, to define the Markov model to define the Markov model we are considering some probabilities. So, one probability that is very important that is called the transition probability. That is A i j. So, that is the probability of S i given S j. That means, in this case what we are considering the transition from one state to another and corresponding to this we are considering one probability and that probability is the transition probability A i j. So, probability of S i given S j that is the transition probability and also because in this Markov model we are considering number of states. So, that is why we are associating some probabilities with the states and that is nothing but the initial probabilities. So, initial probabilities of the states 
initial probabilities that is defined by pi i and that is nothing but the probability of a particular state because in the case of the Markov model we are considering number of states and also we are considering the transition from one state to another state. So that is the concept of the Markov model. So we have number of states like S1, S2, Sn and we are considering the Markov scene property that already I have explained that is the probability of each subsequent state depends only on what was the previous state that is the Markov scene property. And after this we consider some probabilities one is the transition probability so transition from one state to another that is the probability of Si given Sj that is the transition probability from Si to Sj and also we are considering the initial probabilities associated with each and every states of the model. So that is the pi i. So that is the initial probabilities. So corresponding to this concept I can give one example of the Markov model. So let us move to the next slide. So I can give one example suppose I am considering a state and this is suppose rain and another state we are considering suppose dry. So in this example I am considering two states and now I am showing the transition from one state to another. So this is the transition from rain to dry and this is the transition from dry to rain and also we can consider self transition. So that means the self transition is like this. So self transition also we are considering and we are considering the probabilities. So probability of transition from the state rain to the dry suppose I am considering as 0.7. The probability of transition from dry to rain suppose we are considering this probability as 0.2 and the self transition the probability is 0.3 suppose and this self transition the probability is 0.7. So in this model we are considering two states, so two states we are considering and these two states are nothing but the rain and dry and we are considering transition probabilities. So what are the transition probabilities? So suppose the probability of rain given rain that is actually the self transition. So that probability is 0.3 that is I have shown in the figure. So another probability is the probability of dry given rain. So what is the probability you can see from the figure so it is 0.7 and another probability the probability of rain given dry that means the probability of obtaining rain given dry condition is 0.2 and also another probability I have to define the probability of dry given dry that is nothing but the self uh, transition. So it is 0.8, sorry this should be 0.8. We are considering this self transition probability as 0.8 corresponding to dry and the self transition probability corresponding to rain is 0.3 and you can see the probability of dry given rain is 0.7 and probability of rain given dry is 0.2. So these are the transition probabilities we are considering. And also the initial probabilities also we are considering, initial probabilities. So what are the initial probabilities? Suppose we can consider suppose say the probability of rain is equal to 0.4 and the probability of dry 
that is 0 0.6. So, this initial probability is also I am assuming probability of rain is 0 0.4 and probability of dry is 0 0.6. So, this is one example of the Markov model. So, now uh, how to calculate sequence probabilities? So, let us discuss about how to calculate sequence probabilities. So, move to the next slide that is the calculation of sequence probability So, for this we are considering the Markov chain property. So, probability of a state sequence can be found by the following formula. So, suppose I want to determine the probability of a state the sequence is S1 s2 sk so this sequence we are considering so that you can determine like this probability of sk sk depends on the previous states so previous state is s1 s2 up to sk minus 1 so sk depends on the previous state so, S k given S 1 S 2 up to S k minus 1, we have to write the probability S 1 S 2 S k minus 1. So, this is the joint probability. So, this I can write like this the probability of S k given S k minus 1. So, this is the Markov chain property. So, probability s1 s2 up to sk minus 1 so like this we can consider and finally you can say this probability of sk sk minus 1 probability of sk minus 1 sk minus 2 so, we are applying the same rule probability of sk given sk minus 1 probability of sk minus 1 given sk minus 2. So, this is the same rule we are applying corresponding to the Markov model s2 probability of s2 given s1 and finally the probability of the state s1. So, we are applying the Markov same property. So, corresponding to this expansion, I am showing the calculation of the sequence probability. So, if I consider the previous example, suppose I want to calculate the probability of a sequence of states of the previous example. So, I want to determine or I want to calculate a probability. of a sequence of states in my previous example. So, suppose the states are like this dry, dry, rain and rain. So, corresponding to this sequence I want to determine the probability. So, what is the probability in this case? The probability I can determine the probability of dry probability dry comma dry comma rain comma rain. So, this sequence we are considering we are determining the probability and that is actually equal to if I apply the same rule probability of rain given rain probability of rain given dry 
probability of dry given dry and probability of dry. So, we can expand like this. So, we can determine the probability of this sequence. The sequence is the probability of dry comma dry comma rain comma rain. So, how to get this probability? So, by considering this Markov sin property, I can do this expansion and based on this formula, I can determine the probability of dry comma dry comma rain comma rain. So, already I have defined this probability. So, it is probability of rain given rain, it is 0 0.3 into probability of rain given dry that the probability is 0 0.2, the probability of dry given dry that is 0 0.8 and probability of uh, dry, so that is the 0.6. So, this will be approximately equal to 0 0.288. So, this probability I can determine. So, that means the probability of obtaining this particular sequence. So, we can obtain this probability. So, this is the fundamental concept of the uh, Markov model. So, now I will discuss this concept in more detail. So, what is the Markov model? So, let us move to the next slide. So, already I told you in the hidden Markov model, I have number of states. So, that means set of states. So, these sets are like this S1, S2. So, sequence of states like this and the process moves from one state to another generating a sequence of states. So, process moves from one state to another. generating a sequence of states the sequence of states through which the model passes are hidden and they cannot be observed so that is why it is called a hidden so i am repeating this the sequence of states through which the model passes are hidden and it cannot be observed. So, that is why we are considering the term the hidden. The third point I considered the Markov sin property. So, that already I have explained. So, the probability of S k it depends on the previous states. So, previous state is S1, S2 up to S k minus 1. So, I can write that probability of the state S k depends on the previous state that is the Markov property. And already I told you the states are not visible, states are not visible. So, that is why the term is the hidden. But each state randomly generates one of m observations m observations or i can say visible states so visible states are suppose v1 v2 
up to Vm. So, here you can understand what are the main concept of the hidden Markov model. So, the first point is I have number of states that is S1, S2 up to Sn. So, process moves from one state to another generating a sequence of states. So, that means the sequence of states I can write S1, S2, Sk. So, like this I am getting the sequence of states and after this the next point is we are considering the Markov chain property. So, the state Sk depends on the previous state k minus 1. So, probability of Sk depends on the previous state that is the Sk minus 1. So, mathematically the probability of Sk given Sk minus 1. So, that we are considering and the states are not visible. So, that is why the term is the hidden, but each state generate randomly one of m observation or the visible states. So, I am getting the observation symbols the symbols are V1, V2 up to Vm. So, these are the components of the hidden Markov model. So, now mathematically how to define the hidden Markov model? Let us move to the next slide. So, how to define mathematically the hidden Markov model HMM. So, already I told you that we have to consider some probabilities. So, we have to define some probabilities. So, what are the probabilities I have to define? So, for defining the probabilities we are considering the matrix of transition probabilities, transition probabilities because there is a transition from one state to another. So, we have to consider transition probabilities. So, we are considering the matrix, matrix is A and a i j is nothing but the elements of the matrix and actually the a i j that is the transition probability, the probability of s i given s j. So, transition from the state s i to s j. So, that we are considering that transition and corresponding to that transition we are considering a probability. So, I am getting a matrix and that is the matrix of transition probabilities. After this the next important point is we are considering another matrix of observation probabilities. So, for this we are considering the matrix, the matrix is B and B i, the observation symbols is V m, the observation symbol I am considering as V m. So, the matrix B is defined like this. So, where B i V m is nothing but the probability of obtaining the observation symbol Vm given the state Si. The state is not visible, but the observation symbols are visible. So, that is the probability of Vm given Si that probability we are considering and that is the observation probabilities. The second matrix we are considering to consider the observation probabilities. The first matrix I consider for considering the transition probabilities and after this I am considering a vector a vector we are considering for initial probabilities, the vector of initial probabilities. So, this pi is a vector. So, elements are pi i. So, where this pi, pi i, so this pi i is nothing but the probability of the states, the initial probability of the states. So, these probabilities we are defining one is the transition probability, one is the observation probabilities and also we are considering the initial probabilities. So, based on this I can define the hidden Markov model. 
so my model the ACMM model I can define like this the model is M and the parameters are A A means the transition probabilities we are considering B is the observation probabilities and pi is the initial probabilities so these are the components of the model a b pi so i can represent a particular hidden markov model based on these parameters a b pi so corresponding to this concept uh, let us move to the previous example that i considered earlier so we consider this hidden markov model so let us move to the next slide the example of ACMM so based on my previous example I am showing the hidden Markov model so one state already I have shown the states are rain and the dry and suppose I am considering this low state the high state and the outcome is rain and another outcome is the dry we have considered self transition so what is the probability of this the probability is suppose 0 0.3 this self transition probability high suppose 0 0.8 and transition from low to high that transition probability also we considered so it is 0.7 suppose and transition from high to low we considered suppose so we are considering as 0.2 the transition so after this the outcome is whether the prediction of rain or dry so from this we can do some predictions we can do predictions and the probability is suppose 0.6 this probability is 0.6 and this probability is 0.4 and corresponding to dry also we can do the prediction so this probability is 0.6 and suppose this probability is 0.4 so we can do the prediction and I can get the information about the rain whether rain will be there or the dryness so this we are considering so these two variables we are considering low and high and based on all these probabilities the transition from low to high high to low we can do the prediction of rain or dryness so uh, this is one example of the hidden Markov model in this case I have two hidden states that is the low and high that corresponds to atmospheric pressure so I am writing this important points here so I have two hidden states two hidden states so what are the states one is the low another one is the high and these are atmospheric pressure So these are two hidden states and what are the observation states so observation states so again I have two observation states rain and dry so now we are defining the transition probabilities so what are the transition probabilities the probability of low given low that is we are considering 0.3 that is the self transition probability of high given low 
that probability we considered as 0.7. So, another probability is probability of high given high that is we considered as 0.8. So, that is the self transition and another probability is probability of low given high. So, this transition probability is 0.2 we considered like this. So, these are actually these probabilities are the transition probabilities. So, these are transition probabilities. Also, we are considering the observation probabilities. So, what are my observation probabilities? The probability of rain given low, the atmospheric pressure is low. So, what is the probability of obtaining rain given low? Uh, low is the atmospheric pressure. So, that is 0.6 the probability of dry given low atmospheric pressure. So, that is 0.4. The probability of rain given high atmospheric pressure that is 0.4 and probability of dry given the high atmospheric pressure so, that is also 0.6. So, these are observation probabilities. We are also considering initial probability. So, initial probability we are also considering. So, we are also considering initial probabilities. So, what are the initial probabilities? Probability of low, suppose 0.4, and probability of high is suppose 0.6. So, this initial probability is also we are considering. So, in this example, you can see we are considering the transition probabilities, observation probabilities and also we are considering the initial probabilities. Suppose based on this problem, I want to determine the probability of a sequence of observation and suppose I want to determine the sequence dry comma rain. So, if I consider the probability of obtaining first dry and after this the rain, so that sequence probability I can determine. So, move to the next slide. calculation of sequence probability. Calculation of sequence probability. Suppose in this example, I want to determine the probability of the sequence of observation. The sequence is suppose dry and rain. So, this probability I want to determine. So, we have to consider all possible hidden state sequence we have to consider. So, how to determine this probability of dry and the rain this sequence we are considering. So, all possible hidden state sequence we have to consider. So, probability of dry rain and low low. So, this probability we are considering plus the probability of dry rain and low high.
plus probability of dry rain and high low plus probability of obtaining the sequence the sequence is the dry rain and the condition is high and high so like this we can expand so if i consider the first term so this first term if i consider this first term i can write like this the probability of dry rain and the condition is low and the low the low atmospheric pressure and the low atmospheric pressure so if i consider this the first term the first term i can determine the probability dry rain given low low probability of low low so this is equal to probability of dry given low just we are applying the same rule probability of rain given low probability of low probability of low given low probability of dry given low that probability is 0.4 you see the previous slide into probability of rain given low probability of rain given low that probability was 0.6 if you see the previous slide and what is the probability of low the probability of low is 0.4 that is the initial probability and probability of low given low that is probability is 0.3 so ultimately this probability of the sequence will be 0 0.0192 so that is the probability of the sequence dry comma rain that probability i can determine that is the probability of dry comma rain given low and low so the first term i can determine like this and the rest of the terms also i can determine like this so this is the calculation for the first term only so rest of the terms also i can determine like this now briefly i will explain different types of hidden markov model structures so let us move to the next slide so the types of types of the hidden markov model structures so one model is number one agrodic model so in this case i can show it pictorially so i can show it pictorially suppose i have a state one another state is two another state is three another state is four so four states we are considering and i have to show the transitions between the states so from one to two there is a transition from 2 to 1 there is a transition from 1 to 3 there is a transition from 3 to 1 there is a transition 
and from 3 to 4 there is a transition from 4 to 3 there is a transition from 2 to 4 there is a transition from 4 to 2 there is a transition and similarly if I want to consider the transition from 2 to 3 this is the transition from 3 to 2 also I can consider transition from 1 to 4 also I can consider transition and from 4 to 1 also I can consider transition. So, all the transitions I am considering and also I have to consider the self transition also I can consider this is the self transition. So, the self transitions also we are considering. So, I am showing all the possible connections. So, in the agrodic model every a i j that is the transition probability is positive and every transition is possible every transition is possible. So, this is about the agrodic model. So, another one is the Beckis model, another model I can consider that is the Beckis or it is also called the left to right model. So, I can show it pictorially. So, suppose I have number of states. 1, 2, 3, 4. So, these are the states. So, I am showing the transition from the state 1 to 2, from 2 to 3, from 3 to 4. So, these are the transitions. So, there may be transition from 2 to 4, 1 to 3 or maybe 1 to 4. So, all these transitions I am showing and also I have to consider self transitions. So, this is the self transition corresponding to the state 1, this is the self transition corresponding to the state 3, self transition corresponding to the state 4. So, in the Beckis model, this a i j is equal to 0 that is j less than i. So, what is the meaning of this? The transition probability is 0 corresponding to j less than i. That means, the meaning is cannot cannot go backwards. So, only we are showing the forward transitions. So, backward transitions are not possible. So, we are only showing the forward transitions backward transitions are not possible. So, generally uh, this structure is good for temporal structure. So, maybe we can consider speech signal. So, for temporal pattern recognition. So, this model we can use. So, for example, in the speech recognition and uh, this is a popular model that is the Beckis model. So, for recognizing temporal patterns we can consider this model. So, now let us discuss about the main issues in the hidden Markov models. So, in my next slide, I uh, will be explaining what are the issues in the hidden Markov model. So, the main issues in hidden Markov model. So, these are very important issues. So, what we need to consider? The first point is number 1, the evaluation problem. So, what is this problem? Already I have explained about the model of the hidden Markov model. So, already I have explained the model corresponding to SMM. So, the model is represented by like this. The model is M. M is the hidden Markov model and you can see the, the information is A, B and pi. So, these are the components of the model A, B, pi. So, the model is given. So, given the model. 
so the model is given the model is a b pi n what are the things the given the model and the observation sequence sequence so that is also available the model is also available the observation sequence is available so observation sequence is suppose o o1 o2 up to ok so corresponding to this case i have to calculate the probability that the model m has generated the sequence o so i can write calculate or i have to determine the probability calculate the probability that model m has generated the sequence generated the sequence o so this is the first problem that is the evaluation problem so the model is given the model is m and already i told you i have three components a b and pi of the hidden markov model and observation sequence is also given that observation sequence is o the sequence is o1 o2 up to ok so we have to determine the probability that the model m has generated the sequence o so this problem can be considered by one important algorithm the name of this algorithm is the forward backward algorithm forward backward algorithm this is the first problem the evaluation problem so let us discuss about the second problem so what is the second problem number 2 problem and that is called a decoding problem so in this case also the model is given given the model model is the hidden markov model a b pi this model is given and the observation sequence is also given observation sequence is available so sequence is o1 o2 up to ok so what i need to calculate calculate the most likely calculate the most likely sequence of hidden state the hidden state is represented by si that produced that produce this observations observation sequence Oh. so that means in this case what is the second problem the second problem is the decoding problem so the model is given and the observation sequence is also given so we have to determine the most likely sequence of hidden state that is si that produce this observation sequence this is a very important uh, problem and this problem can be considered by one algorithm that is a very popular algorithm and that is called the Viterbi algorithm. So Viterbi algorithm. So this is the first problem. The concept of the forward backward algorithm and the Viterbi algorithm. 
I will not be able to explain in this course because of the time constraints of the 12 weeks course. This is a 12 weeks course and because of the time constraints I will not be able to explain these two important concepts. One is the forward backward algorithm and another one is the VTRB algorithm. So, these concepts you can read from some research papers. So, one paper by Rabiner, the hidden Markov model by Rabiner. So, that paper also you can see to understand these two important concepts. One is the forward backward algorithm and another one is the VTRB algorithm. So, the third problem is the learning problem. So, let us move to the next slide. learning problem. So, that is the third problem. So, what is this problem? Given some training observation sequence So, given some training observation sequences, so suppose the observation sequence is O, O1, these are the observations O1, O2 up to OK, so these are the observations and general structure of the SMM, general structure of SMM. So, what is available in the structure of the SMM? So, maybe we can consider number of hidden, the number of hidden and the visible states, number of hidden and visible states. Number of hidden and the visible states. So, that is the structure of the SMM. So, we have to determine SMM parameters. So, that means I have to determine the model. So, the parameters I have to determine the parameters are a, b and pi. We have to determine that base fit training data. So, we consider the observation sequence O. So, observations are O1, O2 up to OK. So, this is nothing but the sequence of observations, sequence of observations. So, this OK, the observation symbols are V1, V2, these are the observation symbols. So, the third problem is quite interesting because in this problem what is given? Some training observation sequences are given. So, training observation sequences are given and also I have to give the general structure of the hidden Markov model that is the number of hidden state and number of visible states that I have to give. So, general structure of the HMM I have to give and also I have to give the number of training samples that is the training observation sequence I have to give and corresponding to this I have to determine the HMM parameters that means I have to determine the HMM model. A model is represented by a b pi. So, that parameters these three parameters I have to determine uh, that base fit the training data because I have the training data. So, that is why it is a learning problem that is the training of the SMM. So, this problem can be considered by one popular algorithm and this algorithm is the Baum Wells algorithm.
So, we can consider this algorithm for learning problem. So, I am considering three main issues in the SMM. The first one is the evaluation problem. So, in the evaluation problem what we are considering? The model is given and the observation sequence is given and we have to consider or we have to calculate the probability that the model M has generated the observation sequence O that is the evaluation problem and for this we can consider the forward backward algorithm. For decoding problem what we are considering? We are considering the Vitter B algorithm. So, the model is given and the observation sequence is given and we have to calculate the most likely sequence of hidden states that produce these observations that is the decoding problem and one popular algorithm is the Vitter B algorithm we can apply for this. And finally, the third problem is the learning problem. So, in this case we have the training observation sequences and we have the general structure of the SMM. So, we have to determine SMM parameters that means we have to determine the model and this is the learning problem the training of the SMM. So, for this we can consider the popular algorithm is the Baum Wells algorithm. So, already I told you because of the time constraints of this 12 weeks course I will not be able to explain the concept of the forward backward algorithm, Vitter B algorithm and the Baum Wells algorithm. So, you may see some research papers to understand these concepts. So, this is the basic understanding of the hidden Markov model. So, in my next slide briefly I will show one example of computer vision. So, here you can see in this case I am showing gesture recognition problem that is actually the sign language recognition problem or I can say that gesture recognition problem. So, I have all these gestures performed by this person. So, you can see the meaning of these gestures. The first one is the share, the second one is the he has lost it, open the door, he has forgotten it, listen to it, throw it away. So, these are the meanings of these hand gestures. So, if these gestures are performed by different users or different persons, there may be some temporal variations, the spatio-temporal variations. Even the same gesture is performed by the same user in two different times there will be spatio temporal variations. So, that is why if I consider the hidden Markov model I have to train the hidden Markov model because uh, there will be spatio temporal variations. And suppose corresponding to a particular gesture suppose in this case suppose if I consider this gesture you can see the number of states I can consider suppose there will be some initial state S1 suppose another state is S2 another state is S3. If it moves from S1 to S2, if it moves from S2 to S3, so that means a particular gesture is performed, the particular gesture is recognized. So, we have to recognize a particular gesture. So, we have to determine the transition probabilities, all these probabilities we have to determine that already I have explained. So, you can see we have number of states. So, we have the initial state S1 and also we can consider the initial the probability and also the self transition also we have to consider. The self transition also we are considering because you can see in a particular state the hand is waiting in a particular state for some time. So, that means I have to consider self transition and also we have to consider the transition from one state to another. So, if I consider S1, S2, S3 and all the transitions then this particular gesture the hand gesture can be recognized and we have to consider the spatio temporal variations the variation of the gestures in space and also in time. So, already I told you if the gesture is performed by different persons there will be spatio temporal variations and even the same gesture is performed by the same person in two different times then also the spatio temporal variations will be there. So, that is why we have to consider the training, the training of the SMM. Similarly, uh, corresponding to this gesture also, maybe we can consider some model, SMM model. So, maybe S1, S2, S3, S4, S6. So, we have to consider these transitions also. So, these transitions we have to consider and based on this 
state based on this SMM, I can recognize this uh, gesture, the hand gesture. So, you can see the use of the SMM, the application of the SMM in gesture recognition that is a very important computer vision problem. So, I am not explaining in detail, but briefly I am explaining uh, how you can apply the hidden Markov model in recognizing gestures or recognizing sign language you can see in this example. So, uh, this is one application. So, similarly in the speech also you can see there are many applications of hidden Markov model. In this class I briefly explain the concept of the hidden Markov model. I explain the concept of the transition probabilities and the self transitions and based on these probabilities I have defined the hidden Markov model. So, the model is defined by three parameters a, b and pi. So, hidden Markov model is defined by three parameters a, b and pi and after this I discuss three important problems of the hidden Markov model. The first one is the evaluation problem. So, that can be considered by forward backward algorithm. The second problem is the decoding problem. So, that can be considered by the Viter B algorithm. And the third one is the most important problem that is the training of the SMM. So, that can be considered by Baum Wells training algorithm. So, this is about the SMM. So, briefly I explain this concept. So, let me stop here today. Thank you.